Hello and welcome to the new series called Genome Toolkit. In this series, we will write a set of tools that will help us to find and build statistical data around DNA, RNA and protein sequences. We will start by looking at the basic needs of any biologist and write algorithms around their needs. This will include searching for patterns, also known as KMERs, in genomes, building and displaying graphs for GC content in a given sequence, we're going to use graph theory to build and assemble genomes, and much, much more. This is going to be our second and much longer series after the DNA Toolkit series. We will use DNA Toolkit code in our Genome Toolkit class. If you have not started that series or have not yet finished it, I suggest you do before starting the Genome Toolkit series. In the DNA Toolkit, we have built a very basic set of tools to work with DNA RNA sequences. We will be expanding the DNA Toolkit class as we develop our Genome Toolkit. The main goal of this series is to build a set of algorithms and wrap them into a usable bioinformatics tool that is easy to use, modify, and extend. This series is built on information from a lot of amazing sources, primarily bioinformatics course from San Diego, California University. You can find it on Coursera or in my Getting Started in Bioinformatics Step-by-Step -step Guide. Algorithms and solutions from a few good books were also included. In our series, we will try combining a lot of good sources and build a usable tool that can also be used as a part of your portfolio when you apply for a job in the field of bioinformatics. Make sure you don't just copy the code. Make sure you understand it and can modify it to fit your needs if needed. We're going to follow a very basic structure we established in our DNA Toolkit series. It's going to be a lesson article, lesson video, GitLab repository with the code, and any slides or images included in our videos and articles, also be included in GitLab. As we build our first set of algorithms that are applicable in real-world scenarios, we will see how we can integrate them into our DNA engine graphical user interface application, GUI application. We will be building the DNA engine application in parallel within our bioinformatics tools programming in Python with Qt series. There's already three videos in that series on the channel, and we're going to be building that in parallel. All right, now that you know what to expect from this series, let's start by setting up our new working directory, creating the base class, and activating a virtual environment. So before we start, let's talk about the project structure we're going to create. It's going to be two files, genometoolkit.py and application.py file. We're going to create a small basic class called Genome Toolkit. We're going to add and activate a virtual environment within our working directory as well. Yes, we will start using classes. If you have never used classes or need a refresher on how they work, Corey has an amazing video and I'm going to link to it right now. Classes will allow us to structure our project much better. Many useful functions like plotting, reading, writing files, accessing database can be added to our class as we progress. Virtual environments, also known as PIP ENV, will help us to make sure a project is isolated from any other project or software packages you are running on your local computer. When you commit changes to your project, add various packages to it, and you want to make sure that anyone else working with your code is able to run it with no issues, you can do that by adding a virtual environment. You don't have to use it and just skip that part and run your code as it is, but I strongly recommend you do use virtual environments. As always, Corey has an amazing video about how to use them, and I'm going to link to it right now as well. We will continue using VS Code or VS Codium Code Editor, as it is very light, does not have an overwhelming amount of functionality, and it is very easy to set up and use. I also have a video about that. I strongly recommend using exactly the same tools and programs your instructor is using, no matter what courses or tutorials you're following. This will help us to avoid having issues with your code editor and any other tool. You can just focus on writing code and learning new things. We had far too many cases when someone was using editors like PyCharm, Atom, or something else. While they are good editors, they are different from what we're using in our series. And they could not even run very first simple function. They wouldn't see output or output was unexpected or just a plain error. 
it is hard or even impossible to help that person in that case, as everyone has a very different hardware and software setup, okay? So you can, of course, use any other tools as long as you understand what you're doing, and you can debug and solve issues on your own. For everyone else, I suggest using VS Code. Okay, so let's create our folder, files, and the virtual environment. I suggest you do all of that from within the code editor, and you'll see in a second why. I'm gonna go explore, open folder, and because that folder doesn't yet exist, I'm gonna go to the projects folder where all of my projects are stored. You might have a different directory. I'm going to say create a new folder. I'm gonna call it genome toolkit, create, and open. And now you can see if you do that from within the code editor, it's smart enough to reload itself and open our folder, okay? But we can see that there are no files in the list. We're gonna right click, we're gonna activate it, right click, new file. And the first file we're gonna create is gonna be genome toolkit. This file is where we're gonna store the class, the genome toolkit class. So the second file we're gonna create is going to be an application.py. So right click, new file, application.py. So this file is gonna be used to test the functionality we added to our genome toolkit and also build a small example application using our genome toolkit, okay? So now that we have our project created, we're gonna create a virtual environment. You have to use a terminal to do that and you can call it from within VS Code as well. So the shortcut is control tilde or command tilde. I will add those shortcuts on the screen right now. And when you open the terminal, you can actually see that it opened the correct directory for us as well. And this is why doing everything through the VS Code helps us a lot by opening the correct folder, opening the correct path when we open the terminal, okay? So all we need to do now is pip env shell. So if we execute this command, enter, we should see this output. We only care about this line, which says successfully created virtual environment. All the other output might be very different from what you see on my screen, depending on your operating system or Python versions you're running on your local computer. We only care about this, right? So we can close the terminal now, and you can see there's a pip file has been created, and that's the sign that we do have a virtual environment activated in our project. This will just list the versions of packages we are using. You can ignore this for now. We're gonna come back to that later in our future videos. So we have our folders, virtual environment created. How do we know if we are actually using that virtual environment? If you look at the bottom right corner, you can see that it says Python 3.10.7. This happens to be the version I'm running on my local computer. If I click on it, you can see all of the versions of Python running on your local computer. It might be very different on your machine. It might be 3.9, 3.8. It doesn't matter as long as it's listed here but we don't see the virtual environment we just created. To do that, you just need to reload your project, okay? So I'm gonna close VS Code and I'm gonna run it again. It will reload the folder for us. And we're gonna go to the bottom right corner again. And now we actually see a virtual environment created. This code you see right here is going to be different on your local machine as well. Okay, so we can select this virtual environment now and we can see that has changed here in the right bottom corner. So this is it. Now that we have our project set up and virtual environment activated, let's just print a simple text in our application.py file to make sure that it's all set up correctly and is working, right? So I'm gonna just print genome toolkit. And we can see right away that it says, hey, do you want to install a formatter called pep8, auto pep8? And I would strongly recommend you do, just go yes, and it will install this PEP8. So PEP8 is just a simple package that will format our code to match Python standards. PEP8 is a Python standard of writing code. You can ignore this for now, it doesn't really matter, but you will see the results of PEP8 as we develop our class. We can close this now, and you can see another file has been added after we installed this new package. If I can open that, it just lists the packages that are part of our project. You can see PEP8 package has been added and few other packages. Again, you can ignore this for now. It doesn't really matter as long as we can write and execute our code. When needed, we're gonna come back to this and discuss some of these versions. We can close this file. We can save again and try running. And we can see that we have a proper output.
that's great. Now we have our folder, our files, our virtual environment activated, and our first print working correctly. Now we can start adding the class to our project. Okay, so now we know that our project is set up correctly. Let's get rid of the text example here. Go to Genome Toolkit, and I'm going to copy and paste a very basic skeleton class to start off. Okay, so the class is called Genome Toolkit. This is the way Python naming convention tells us to name our classes. Genome, Toolkit, no spaces, no other symbols. This class for now will have just one function called init. Init is initialization function. Basically, whatever is inside of this function will be always called when we create an instance of our class. And we will see when we test that instance, okay? For now, we're just printing out genome toolkit has been initiated. So if we're gonna go back to our application.py, okay? We need to somehow include the code from our genome toolkit.py into our application.py. We can do that by saying from genome Okay, it actually tells us that it knows that this file exists in our local folder. We're going to say from genome toolkit, import genome toolkit. Okay, so auto completion works. That's great. So now that we have our genome toolkit class imported into our application, we can start using it. And we can start using it by creating an instance of that class. We're going to use a short version, gt for genome toolkit equals genome toolkit. So what we did, we said, hey, I want to have all of the functionality from this class, which is just one function for now. I want it to be accessible through GT instance, okay? So now we, again, we don't have any functionality, but if we run this code, you will see something interesting. Let me execute it, control alt N. You can see that the code genome toolkit that is in here, let me actually split that into two screens. So it's easier for us to see we can see the line number three actually called this code. Because again, this is initialization function, also known as constructor. Every time we create an instance, it will call all of the code from this function. For now, we're just gonna print the information that genome toolkit has been initialized. But in our future videos, you will see how we can use this initialization function to load sequences, read or save files on the fly when we create our genome toolkit. This function will be very useful for us in the future. But for now, we can run the code again. We can see that we have our skeleton class created. We have imported that class into our application and we just created that instance of that class and called it GT. And we can see that it works because the initialization function has been called, okay? Okay, so this is it for this video. This is only the beginning. Now that we have our project configured, our base class created, we are ready to start adding a lot of very cool functionality to our bioinformatics tool that we call Genome Toolkit. Our upcoming videos, we're gonna start focusing on one algorithm at a time and build out our tool. Make sure to join our community listed on the screen right now. And until next time, Rebel Coder signing out.